and giving your son. Father, we cannot begin to express in word, Father, how blessed we are to be in Christ Jesus. Father, we pray that this afternoon you would help us to recognize that no matter the circumstances in our lives, no matter the sufferings we may have to go through, nothing will prevent glory, Heavenly Father, as long as we continue to fight the good fight of faith. Bless us, Heavenly Father, to do this. Help us not to grow weary in well-doing. For it's in Christ's name we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm just still uh, just overwhelmed uh, by what we examined this morning from the scriptures in Ephesians chapter 1, seeing that we have all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus and seeing what that actually means. Uh, just going back to uh, when we talked about that we are now the adopted children of God, knowing that uh, it's not anything of ourselves, but God has chosen us uh, to be his children. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Is that all right? And we learned also that as children, we now... Uh, as being members of the family of God, we've been made heirs. Not only heirs, we are, we're heirs of God, and as we're going to see tonight, we're co-heirs uh, with Christ Jesus. But I'm asking the question uh, briefly this evening, what does that mean for you and I? Uh, I want to go uh, in Romans chapter 8, if you would meet me there in Romans chapter 8, where I really wanted to go earlier uh, but I realized that I took too much time uh, earlier, so I'll try to give you your 25 minutes back uh, this afternoon. Is that all right? We're just going to get a word from the Lord. We're not going to cheat the Lord, but we're going to be blessed and then we'll get out of here. Is that all right? But we want to know and we want to understand. I know you say amen to that, but we want to know and we un want to understand that sufferings will not prevent glory. Is that all right? Sufferings will not prevent glory. Romans chapter 8. We left off this morning in talking about which person of the Godhead? The Holy Spirit, right? And we saw that God has, in addition to everything that he's done for us, he's also given us the earnest of his spirit. In other words, a pledge or a guarantee, a down payment to ensure our redemption. But we talked about the fact that because we have the Holy Spirit, or now that we have the Holy Spirit, we now have to be brought under what? Under his influence. And if you want to be under the influence of anybody, it's the Holy Spirit. Is that all right? We talked earlier from the book of Galatians chapter 5 where it says, Be ye led by the Holy Spirit. Walk in the Holy Spirit. You see, the Spirit is not going to make us do anything. It has to be by our own will and our own choice to willingly submit ourselves. Is that all right? Some of us have been in incidents where we have been arrested by the Holy Spirit. Amen. When you wanted to say something, you want to give somebody a piece of your mind. And the Holy Spirit reminds you that it ain't worth it. Amen. It ain't worth it to sacrifice everything you've grown and, and worked for just for a moment of vindication. It's not worth it. Is that all right? So I want to go back to verse 6. Is that all right? Verse 6, Romans chapter 8. If you're there, say amen. amen. For to be carnally minded is death. Is that what your Bible says? Or a mind that is controlled by the carnal man is death. Remember we talked about we have to be brought under the control or the influence of the Holy Spirit. So he's telling us, listen. You have to allow yourself, you have to submit yourself to the will of my spirit, not to your flesh. Now the key is, if we're just feeding on the world and not on the word of God, what's going to win out? Absolutely. So he says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to God, neither indeed can be. I want you to understand this. 
you'll never feel like doing anything for God. Y'all need to hear what I'm saying with that. Because sometimes we're all like, man, I don't feel like, I feel like, I feel like. With your kernel, man, you'll never feel like doing anything that God wants you to do. Is that all right? Your spiritual man has to be directed by the Holy Spirit to make you, to get you into the routine and the habit of doing God's will. All right? Remember, we're made in the image of God. What does that mean? We're a personality. What does that mean? We have three parts of us that's, that, that God has. That is intellect, emotion, and will. Is that all right? And sometimes our emotions are up and down. However I'm feeling today, that's what I do. But once you submit yourself to the Holy Spirit with your intellect so you can understand, then your emotions will be controlled and directed by the Holy Spirit. You ever dealt with somebody who's just emotional? I say they are all the time emotional. So what you got to do, you got to, whenever they, they come around, you got to see how they're acting first. Is this a good day or a bad day? Right? You got to see what type of day it is before you can communicate with them. Because they're emotional. That are right. So he says, verse 8, so then they that are in the flesh cannot, cannot, cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Does the spirit of God dwell in you? Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Say all that to say this. Verse 12, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. We don't have to live like that anymore because we have been set free from that. Watch this. When you were in the world, no matter how good you got it together, you were still dead. There was nothing you and I can do about that condition we were in. But now we're brought under the controlling power of the Holy Spirit that has set us free from that life of sin and death. Is that all right? In other words, Christians, you have a choice now to live after the spirit and no longer after the flesh. It's your choice. You say, well, they made me mad. That's your choice what you do with that anger. Amen. Bible says be angry, but sin not. Amen. Stop letting your emotions run you. Some of us are going to a devil's hell because our emotions are messed up. And what somebody we think somebody did to us. That's another lesson. But I'm here to tell you, I, I've seen with my own eyes, I've seen people allow emotions to keep them from forgiving and doing God's will. <sighs> For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if through the spirit you do more or but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So we have an obligation under the controlling power of the spirit to make sure we kill some things on a daily basis, too. So it's not just about ascertaining knowledge. That's part of it, yes. I said earlier that I'm going to always encourage you to come to classes. I'm going to always encourage you to study your own Bible. Amen, that's great. But there's also some things you have to unlearn. There's some things that's in your flesh that you have to put to death. Is that all right? Y'all hear what I'm saying? Watch what he says. Verse 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the what? Sons of God or the children of God. Is that all right? For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. We don't have to go back to where we were once were. Is that all right? 
Sometimes we want to go back there. We don't want to go back there. We thank God that he saved us from that mess. I don't want to go back there. Wasn't that enough for you? He says, the spirit of bondage again unto fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. In other words, now, guess what? Now that I'm in Christ doesn't mean that things in life have changed. But now I have someone, the only one I need to go to, to in order to deal with them things. I don't have to cry to y'all no more. I can cry to him who really understands. We have a high priest who's not cannot be tempted with the, the feelings of our infirmities. He can understand everything we go through. Amen. He says, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. That we are the children of God. Now let me just say this. The Bible says next, verse 17, and if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Now, I know at face value, we, we really can't comprehend all that. Can't comprehend that whatever is Christ is also mine. Just ask yourself real quick, what is it that Christ has? And we're worried about what? You're distressed about what? The Spirit is revealing that as children of God, we have something to look forward to. Is that all right? I know, I know carnally we want to have our cake and, and eat it too. But spiritually, we really have something to look forward to. And if I had time, I would really go back to Ephesians to show you that all the spiritual blessings that we have, we're actually supposed to share them right now. You're supposed to enjoy them right now. But I know that's that's another lesson. I know we probably wouldn't buy that all the way, but it's the truth anyhow. Is that all right? He says, then join heirs with Christ. We have a reward that is yet to come. So the question is, if we have a reward that's yet to come, then what is it on earth that we're worried about? You see, I've not been to one funeral yet that has not read John 14. Y'all know John 14? John 14. Starting with verse number one, the word of God says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. Don't you know that's not an occasion where somebody was dying? Y'all ain't get that. That's not an occasion where someone is dying. That's an occasion where Christ is letting his disciples know that I'm going to be leaving, but no one is dying at that instance. It's all about trouble. So whatever your trouble is, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The question is, do you believe that? Are you anticipating his return? Or does the world have such a hold on you that you can't see past what's going on in your life right now? You see, that's what. Us sometimes 
Satan has us focused on the here and now. And we have to really learn from Jesus, Hebrews chapter 12, which tells us that Jesus endured his present sufferings because he lived for the joy that was set before him. Are y'all hearing me? You see, it doesn't always seem like what we know we have coming is going to ever come to pass, especially when you're going through some suffering in your life. Is that all right? Any of y'all going through any suffering in your life? Has anybody got any hard times in your life? But we, we have to understand the church, the state of the church in the world will always be in a state of affliction. All right. Just like we were learned yesterday. The world is not of the father. Though everything that's in the world is not of the father. So we have to realize that we're hated. Jesus said, if the world hated me, understand it's going to hate you, too. So don't look for any relief in the world. You're not going to get any. Is that all right? Jesus said, and I'm, I, I got this from NIV translation. 2 Timothy 3.12. Paul, speaking to Timothy, said, yes. We know from the King James it says, and all that will live godly. It says, all that desire." To live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Just us trying. Y'all. Just you trying to live right. It's going to bring persecution and sufferings in your life. Is that right? So that's why he says back in Romans Chapter 8, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. Now that's good news, isn't it? But watch what he said. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also, or may be also glorified together. We want to share in his glory, Amen. Well, we're going to have to share in his suffering, too. So share with him, right? This share with him. Share with me. Share in the experience of the same kind of pain and persecution in order to be able to sympathize with. You know when people say, well, you don't know my pain. Right? Jesus is saying, listen, I want you to know my pain. I want you to be able to sympathize with me. I want you to experience some of the persecutions. Not exactly because we can handle all that. God knows what we can bear. God be praised for that. Is that all right? Just take for a second. We were talking yesterday. Just take for a second. Whatever. And I'm, I'm not saying this to minimize whatever you're going through. Is that all right? But whatever you're going through, there's somebody in a family of God that's suffering somewhere in this world that are trade places with you today. Today. We over here, man, I got the bills to pay. Our brothers in Africa wish they had some bills to pay. Sometimes I, I think it's a terrible thing that your toilet stopped working. Praise God you got a toilet. You know, you never know how important your toilet it is until it stops working. See, I know about going down south. Amen. Had to make use in the woods with things. All my cousins running around on rocks in their bare feet. I'm like, man, what's wrong with y'all? But my, my point is, there's somebody living even worse off than you. So don't get to a point so often where you just want to, my cross is so bad, I, I want your cross. I don't know what you're going through. I better keep my cross. 
and be happy about it. Is that all right? Now watch this. First Peter chapter two, verse 20 and 21. We know it says, for what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently. But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently. This is acceptable with God for even in for even here unto or to this were you called because Christ also suffered for us or for you, leaving us an example that we shall follow his steps. What do you think it means when it says grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in Second Peter 318? The knowledge is not just this knowledge, it's experience. And that's why Paul can say, oh, that I can know him in a fellowship of his sufferings. But I want you to know, as I close, Paul is encouraging the saints at Rome because he's trying to prepare their mind. Remember last week we talked about mindset? Set your affection on what? Things that are above, not on things of the earth. And remember, we said that things are above are what? Higher importance. Things of higher importance than things of lower importance. So he's, he's encouraging them to say, listen, you, you have all of this in Christ. You have something to look forward to. You have a reward that's coming. Is that all right? No matter of the sufferings you're going through now, the sufferings are not going to prevent the glory that's going to be revealed in you. Some of us are suffering a whole lot. But what will it matter in that day? It would have been all worth it. Is that all right? So he's, he's encouraging this to help their mindset. And that's why it's important for us to live in accordance to or in anticipation of what's to come. Because if we live just according to what we have, that ain't living for much at all, is it? If this is all we got to look forward to, huh, we might as well just throw in the towel right now. That's, this is it? This is all we got? Even if you had all the money in the world, what would matter? Because you still got to die. Mark Cuban, he's a billionaire, but he still gets sick. People in his family still die. Billions can't save you. So that's why he says, verse 18, trying to prepare their minds so they can live in anticipation and always comparison. Okay? Verse 18, he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory of which shall be revealed in us. Start living in anticipation, but also start living when you have sufferings in comparison of the sufferings compared to the glory that's going to be revealed. Now, the hard part that we have in it is we don't know fully what's going to be revealed. So we, we're looking at it you know, from, from this perspective, and we don't understand what it is that we, we're going to have fully, but all we can really understand and know is that it's going to be joy. It's going to be a joyous occasion. All right? So can I live in anticipation of that for the joy that's set before me? Is that all right? But I just want to drop one more thing. Can I do that? God is so good that for all the sufferings 
that come into our lives. His comforts come into our lives too. You ever think about this? How, really, how could you know how good God is if you never went through nothing? Second Corinthians, real quick. Second Corinthians chapter one. The verse three says, bless be the God, even the father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Father of mercies means father of compassion. And he has compassion on us. We as children. You recognize that? All right. The God of all comfort who comforted us in all of our tribulation, in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are any are any in trouble. Right. In any trouble. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted by God. So guess what? You mean to tell me if I never been through nothing, I can't come and comfort you with the comfort that I was comforted with? That's why we have to recognize our sufferings are just not for you. It's so that you can be able to comfort somebody else when they have some struggles. Is that all right? Now watch what he first says in verse 5. I have to get this because my page is all messed up. 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 5, he says, For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. I'm going to tell you all the truth. OK. There's nothing that I've been through in my life that God hasn't provided comfort for. Nothing. Eight years old, mama gone. Daddy gone. Struggles throughout your whole life. Things that you won't dare to mention. And I'm still here standing for God. Comfort. Places we've been. And guess what? Because of how we were, God should have left us there. But he brought you out that mess. Got you out that mess. Say, when I'm still in some mess, he going to get you out of that too if you have faith. God is, God is good, man. Yeah. So good that it just, I don't know about y'all, dude. In private moments, yeah. when it's just you and God, you came but to grieve, yeah. shed a tear, yeah, just for how good he's been. You love me. Like Paul said, I'm the chief of sinners and you you found me faithful enough to serve in your ministry. Me. So when you consider that, what is it that we won't do for God? What is it in your life that's keeping you from submitting everything in your life to God who's given you everything? So just think about how good God is the next time you say, well, you know, I got this going on, so I don't know if I could. The next time you say, well, you know, you don't know what they did to me. I can't forget. I'm not minimizing that. But if God can forgive you, what is it truly that you can't forgive? Who are you? This is just another warning. Really not a warning, just an admonition in the love of God to say, hey, you really got to look at your life. And if there's some things that you can make a right, 
You need to do that. You need to do that. Make it right. Because you know that's my will. You got the nerve to say, well, that's too much to ask. I've said enough. Sufferings will not prevent our glory. So as we said in Revelation class, UConn, as you said, uh, I listen to you. I remember what you said. You said it over two months ago. But what he said was so profound. He said he's made up in his mind whatever he needs to do to please God, he's just going to do. Because God has just been so good. What can he ask us? What can he ask of us that would be outrageous for us to do? The only outrageous thing is if your ego is such that you won't consider to do it. Now you got to check your ego. Because no matter what we speak about every Lord's Day, all we're talking about is how good God is. No matter where you're coming from in this Bible, what sermon, what your message is, it's all about how good God is. I've said enough for the second time. If anyone is present, it's not obeyed the gospel. You can come having heard the word. Do you believe it? You believe it. Are you willing to repent of your sins and confess the glorious name of Jesus Christ? And then in baptism and obedience and baptism. Amen. Put on Christ. Our young sister, our little sister did it earlier today. And I'm saying we ought to be rejoicing because it's amazing how children see what they need to do before adults see what they need to do. Is that all right? For those of us who have obeyed the gospel, for those of us sitting here, listen. Not, again, trying to minimize our sufferings. But the Bible says, Paul told Timothy, endure. Endure afflictions as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. We understand that sufferings won't present our, prevent our glory because it didn't prevent Jesus' glory. Is that all right? The death of the cross was the worst thing a man can experience. But God has made it glorious to a point where people are wearing that shameful thing on their necks. Is that all right? 